Good morning. My name is Salmata Ibrahim. I'm a final year PhD student at the University of Exeter and the Center for Water Systems. My supervisors are Professor Fires Memon and David Butler. And this conference paper is the result of a comprehensive study of per capita water consumption investigated during the rain and dry season in Freetown, the capital city, city of Sierra Leone. The presentation outline includes the aim, the case study, the methodology, the result, the conclusion, and the key findings. The aim is to investigate and model seasonal variation of rain and dry season per capita water consumption in Freetown, Sierra Leone. Freetown is the capital city of Sierra Leone, one of the wettest in the world. It has an area of 81 square kilometers, a population of slightly over 1 million 55,000 inhabitants. Its annual rainfall ranges from 2,500 millimeters to 6,000 millimeters in the air. Yet, even in the midst of a heavy downpour, the taps are dry. The average temperature in the rain season is from 60, 26 degrees Celsius in the daytime to 12 degrees Celsius in the night, and from 33 degrees Celsius in the daytime to 30 to 20 degrees Celsius in the night in the dry season. Relative humidity in the rainy season is 95%, and relative humidity in the dry season is 72%. The climate is tropical throughout. It has a dry hot season from December to January, a mountain season of dry wind from December to March, and, a, and an African torrential rain season from May to November. Water sources for Freetown, the main water source is from the Hoover Valley Water Company, which has a dam structure built in, in the early 1960s for, an, for a population of 300,000 inhabitants. No further structure has been done to the dam, but the dam has a capacity in the dry season of 19 million gallons per day and 23 million gallons per day in the rainy season. And this supplies is up to supply the whole city, including the other other sectors. So the this result of high rainfall and poor dam structure has resulted in many neighborhoods having a, no pipe water at all and women children have to roam the streets with containers in their in their vehicles on their heads and wheelbarrows push cart looking for water so many residents have even uh, dug wells um, or collect water from polluted sources and rivers and some have been buying from water cottage industries um, the other sources alternative sources include green water surface water Water stored in tanks, wells, boreholes, and vendor. The hydrogeology is mostly weathered and fractured gabbroic rock. The study area has been divided into four income groups based on their location. However, water consumption rates are calculated by the Guma Valley based on the housing structure. So four Household income groups have been identified. The orange ones here are the, the deprived, densely populated informal slum settlement. They really have um, access to pipe water but have benefited from other improved sources like springs um, and uh, gravity pipes. The yellow here are the densely populated poor areas with less access to public standpipes. The light greenish color here are the clusters of poor households in better in better health in, in areas. These have limited or no pipe water because of the the low pressure or because the the facility is not existent the system is not existent and finally you have the the blue areas which are the better off areas the methodology for the data collection uses a uh, multiple choice type questionnaires these questionnaires had over 80 standard questions and they were distributed to university students to complete them on behalf of the household because these questionnaires were in English and too complicated for the normal households. The 
550 households were targeted and um, 398 households were received which had valuable information for analysis. So the 398 questionnaires received were coded and imported into statistical packages for social sciences, for social sciences, the SPSS version 25 for analysis as well as um, Microsoft Excel for the data presentation. The four household income groups were, uh, um, were evaluated individually to determine the daily per capita water consumption. The household survey conducted uh, looked at key variables like demographic, and uh, which looked at the number of children in the household, the physical, which looked at the number of rooms, the toilets, the water use habit, which looked at the collection containers, the time to fetch, the distance, the means of transportation. The water consumption uh, um, survey was further subdivided into water end in, in the water end uses and outdoor water end uses. And these water end uses we uh, for the indoor looked at bathing, showering, wash, wash and sink use, dishwashing, etc. And the how the water use looked at garden use, vehicle, swimming pool. It further also looked at the frequency, the duration, the flow rate, and the volume of of water used. This this slide presents the summary of the analysis of the household socioeconomic characteristics uh, um, for the current survey, as well as that compared to the survey conducted by the statistics survey in 2015. Stat um, the statistics survey normally conducts sur um, su um, surveys, um, national surveys every five years. So there's one schedule for this year as well. So the result here is presented for the 395 households. And um, here we see that the residential unit revealed that um, for the house types, 60%, um, 60, nearly 61% of the investigated house, how, uh, um, house type was houses, 30% was apartments, and 9.5% was compound homes compared to the survey for the the National Country, uh, um, Statistics Office, which had houses for 54 and um, compound houses for 9.9%. The family income, um, average family income for our own survey was 1,350,000 euros compared to 900,000 euros for the, the survey conducted by Statistics Survey. The survey result further revealed the different um, that was investigated for the different house revealed the the dominant um, water sources that is prevalent in the different household income groups. It can be seen here that the for the high and middle, the these are mostly concentrated with the, the piped water as well as the sources that are relatively improved. Whereas the for the lower income groups, the highest access were where the, the gravity, the, the spring, the surface water, and then the water stored in tanks, because these have been supported, these are uh, communities have been supported with um, these sources by not um, the um, non-governmental NGOs. The analysis also revealed that 33% um, of the uh, uh, investigated households have um, pipe connections, 16% had dog wells, and 7% had boreholes in their very close to their in their locations within their locations. Further analysis revealed here that. Um, 46% of the, the in, in inhabitants spent, I mean, fetch their water within um, 100 meters from their households. And the remaining 
goes beyond the 100 meter mark which is designated by the un the same goes for the distance for the time they spent so only 21 percent of the of the households um spend zero to 30 minutes of their time um or less okay the remaining 70 nine percent spend more than 30 percent of their time the results for that revealed here the um the the average per capita water use for the different water end uses and um, between or amongst the different household income groups for households with pipe water as well as households without pipe water and then um, the r values the um, show the, the that there's a correlation correlated relationship between the water consumption and the monthly income per, or per capita income because the r value at um, a p value of less than 0 0.05 was 0 0.7 for per capita water consumption and the family income and this gives an indication that as the per capita family income is increasing so also is the the water consumption increase and this is this can be seen in the in this picture here that there is increase in the there is a positive um, relationship between the water consumption and family income also the water consumption also increases with the increase in the number of containers uh, uh, um, used the r value was 0 0.61 but um, a negative relationship was shown between distance which has a, a r value of minus 0 0.5 and the time spent which has a R value of minus 0 0.71. The, the, um, these uh, they greatly affect the water consumption because so much time is spent to fetch, um, to move um, a very far distance to, to find water. And also when you get to the water source, you have to spend a lot of time to queue up. This next slide shows the frequency of water use um, for the different income groups so the frequency here is shown here we can see here that um, for the slum and the informal communities they they're slightly a little bit higher than the high income groups in terms of in looking at the um, the hand wash the toilets and the toilet use the toilet use here is varies because in these households, most of the household reported more than one toilet. Some, most of them had latrines, which uses little water and, and flush toilets, and most of them also had pool flush, where um, they could save or they could use minimum water when the taps are closed. So, um, for the slum, for the slum households, the volume, I mean, the frequency was much higher than for the high income groups. This was ex um, explained that most of them have their, their businesses centered within their households. So they spend most of their time in, at the house. And then for the, the high income groups, some of them are spend most of their time in the office space and probably they are using more water as they are in the office space. Um, the frequency for the other uses like this dishwashing um, is almost the same for all of them because uh, most of them reported just two times a day clothes washing there's a slight increase for the lower income groups probably because they have fewer um, clothes and they're doing more more clothes washing in terms of the, the the duration and flow rate what was measured here was for the um, the water end uses that do you that can be uh, that flow rate can be measured for and these are for households which with tap and um, water facilities so showering and hand wash basins are the common ones here so the duration 
and um, also has some effect for the low income if you looking at this one the low income is slightly higher because um, of the fact that they spend more time at home and they spend more time using their 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 their, their, their taps or even maybe taking a shower at the house but in terms of the flow rate which is the second graph here the flow rates are definitely higher in the high income groups far higher than in the low income groups so these households in the high income groups are fitted with better uh, 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 facilities better employment facilities so therefore they have better flow in of their water this slide looks at the the volume the volume between all the income groups for all the the water end uses and you can see the variations in them bathing is almost uh, fixed but the volume use actually is slightly higher for all of them this is when all of them are combined dishwashing is almost the same but flow rate i mean volume also increases for the high income groups the other increasing value which we saw was the the clothes washing clothes washing is slightly higher but in all of these none of the households none of the households reported using household appliances like dishwasher or washing machine because of the capacity for for energy which is lacking so most of them are you doing hand washing and, and as well as dishwashing in a, in a basin the the toilet use is um, volume is also higher so it still shows that the, the water consumption is positive as a positive relationship with the um, per capita income this slide compares the first slide a compares the per capita daily per capita water end use for all the different water end uses between the rain season which is in the blue and the dry season which i've recorded in the red uh, the the you can see the variation here between the rain season and the dry season um and for the garden no household reported using uh, um water for gardening because uh, they said they, they don't have the, the the cause of the rain they don't bother to do it but uh, in terms of showering showering is quite high where they're using showering it's one of the highest volume use followed by clothes washing as well as bathing so these are the eye the one that consume the eye and also cooking cooking in the dry season and clothes washing in the dry season are fairly high as well as bathing because of the weather it's hot it's hot it's dusty and probably they are using more water to wash clothes um, as well as to wash the ingredients used for cooking the second graph here uh, compares the the frequency distribution of the average daily water consumption for the two seasons that is in terms of the liters used for in the dry season and the rain season the in blue is also is for the rain season and the red is for the for the dry season and the curves uh, also there's also the frequency distribution and kilometric curves for both the per capita for all the the Soviet households during the dry and the rain season is shown here it's, it's seen here that the the number of households which consume more than 76 liters per day decreases in from 71 percent in the in the rain season to just six percent in the dry season and further analysis also shows that the the, the daily per capita was in consumption of the dry season is mainly between 26 uh, liters to, se to 75 liters that is where it is concentrated in the dry season To so study the statistical variability of the water end uses, a two tail T test at 95% confidence interval 
um, with a p-value of 0 0.05 was conducted. So here in this table, it, sh it shows the water end uses, the average for the two seasons and the difference between the two. The T values are plotted here and the, the, the P significant values are shown here for um, for bathing, for hand wash basins, for cistern flushing, toilets, for all of the toilet use, as well as for house cleaning. These have values that are higher than 0 0.05. The p-values are higher than 0 0.5, 0 0.05. This shows that they are not significantly statistically significant to uh, uh, significant values. We are asked for the for showering. For dishwashing, clothes washing, drinking and cooking, vehicle washing and garden uh, uh, um, watering, these fall below 0 0.05 um, p-value and they are significantly different, uh, um, as significant difference between the rain and dry season. These findings are in an agreement with Ayeshola Liang that um, toilet use, bathing, these are less sensitive to seasonality. So using the data set, 20 statistical models were developed using multiple linear regression stepwise method technique. This technique has been successfully used to predict water demand by um, Hussein uh, Metal in 2016. The technique involves, the approach is that the, the calibration set of data for the whole households we are accepted as we can see here, into four models. The models here are the demographic, the physical, the water end use, and all the three of them. Okay, so this model was done for the for the all households, and then it was also repeated for the individual income groups. That is the informal slum. Uh, and right down to the high income groups. So this slide, uh, what I've presented in this slide is the, is the model for the investigated income groups for all of them and under the the first one here is the demographic and we can see that the 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 r square value here is between 0.7 to 0.6 and the model the next one is a physical and the third one is the water use water use this is for the winning season and then this is where we have all of them combined the other one is for the dry season but what uh, um, the result has shown here uh, is that the when these values, when these data are disaggregated into the different income groups, you can see here that the R square values are quite high. You can compare them here; they are quite high compared to when we just looked at the rain season and the dry season. So the, the figures here, the R square value is what I've listed here. The R square values improve significantly when they are disaggregated into the various income groups. And um, the graph here shows, this is for the rain season. The graph, the graph here shows the prediction um, um, plotted as against the actual per capita water consumption and the train set. 
So this is for the dry season as well. So the R values are indicated and they are much more uh, um, impressive than for the whole survey. So the R values when disaggregated are very much better than for the old for the whole survey group where yeah, we have all the 396. The the conclusion and findings of this um, investigation shows that the per capita consumption decreases with an increase in the household size and then it, it actually increases with income as we've seen. Florets for shower and uh, wash basin actually increases with per capita income, which suggests that then for the lower uh, um, household, they probably have poor fitting structures. The duration for shower is much more lower compared to even compared to the other uh, um, global figures. And this is a result because water is not uh, um, consistent. Uh, there is intermittent water supply and um, the data also shows that uh, we can be able to, to significantly estimate accurate um, data in this world. The demographic um, and water use actually provide more accurate uh, estimates of PC than the prediction from the use of the, the physical of the. So, and then using this collected data now, it is possible for us to, to be able to, dip, to estimate daily per capita consumption. Uh, uh, and also the quality, like I've said, improves when the full data was disaggregated. So the, the, the per capita consumption pattern in the area is also under provided because of the intermittency and the study also received that no household had water supply so basically the conclusions have said most of them and i want to thank you all very much for your attention and if there are any questions you're welcome thank you so much